Jason, I don't want to address the elephant in the room. I want to talk a little bit more about the science of the molecule, what we really know about what ivermectin really does and can do. Hey everybody, Professor Davis here, chemsurvival.com, YouTube channel, chemsurvival. And I thought we'd start a new tradition this week with Molecule Mondays. And yes, I'm aware it is a Tuesday in keeping with yet another tradition that's long standing. I'm a little bit late, but I've got an interesting molecule to talk with you about today anyway. Uh, that molecule has been in the news bit here lately. Uh, it's called ivermectin. Now I'm not gonna go anywhere near the bad press that this molecule has gotten. I don't wanna address the elephant in the room. I want to talk a little bit more about the science of the molecule, what we really know about what ivermectin really does and can do. And that is it's used as an antiparasitic. It's used to uh, deworm livestock and to treat parasitic in, uh, infestations, sometimes in people, other times in animals. Uh, but let's take a look at the molecule ivermectin and then, uh, and then take another look at how it actually works when it gets inside of a parasite that's giving your pet or uh, your livestock trouble. When I do that, I'm gonna jump over here to the, uh, to the PubChem website, which is one of my favorites to go to when I first wanna learn a little bit about a molecule. And just give you a little hot take here on uh, ivermectin. There's the structure of the molecule right there. Um, first of all, loads of ether bonds. Uh, let's look a little bit closer at it here. So it's got some relatively hydrophobic, low polarity regions of the molecule. When I look at that, one of the first things I think about when I see a molecule that doesn't have a lot of OHs, NHs, those sorts of uh, functional groups, is this thing's probably not going to be terribly water soluble. It's probably going to like hydrophobic environments. This one here, this is the IUPAC name. IUPAC, of course, International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. I'm not going to read the entire name off to you, but you can, uh, you can see that for yourself. It's rather lengthy. Um, interesting. It's got a spiro functionality. Spiros are bicyclic compounds or, or multicyclic compounds in which the two rings are connected at a single atom. So that's a really interesting functional group that we don't see a lot of in biochemistry, but we definitely do see some. Uh, and lots of other information, of course, about it. NCBI has got a really great website here. You can learn a whole lot about a molecule in a very short amount of time just by jumping on to the NCBI website. So ivermectin is uh, or was discovered in the 1970s, uh, began use as a therapeutic in the 1980s as an antiparasitic agent. And that's because it has a very special effect on insects and nematodes and those sorts of lower order uh, organisms, right? So let's take a look at what it does when it gets inside one of those things, shall we? Let's jump over to a structure that I grabbed from the protein data bank and have opened here on BMD. And let me walk you through this just a little bit. The, the, the licorice based portion of this molecule that you see, and it is a, it's a beast of a molecule, isn't it? Is actually a protein. Uh, and the van der Waals that you see down here, these smaller molecules with the larger spherical atoms, those are ivermectin. And the ivermectin is in complex with this large protein, but it's really hard to see what's happening. So what biochemists often do is we reduce the protein down to just the peptide backbone and represent that as ribbons. And that gives us an easier way to look at that. So let me, let me jump into my, uh, to my display settings here for VMD. And what I'm gonna do is just change those licorice over to, to ribbons so it's a bit easier to see. And you know what? I think I'll probably change the color of those ribbons. Let's uh, switch to, uh, let's see here, I'm gonna go to color ID. And let's see what, what looks nice, what looks good. Orange, okay, that makes the ivermectin stand out real nicely. So you can see they have a very specific association with this protein. Now, this is what we call a transmembrane protein. And this sort of barrel shaped region down here in the, on the lower half, these alpha helices all sort of bundled together is the transmembrane domain of this protein, which is to say that those phospholipids that make up the bilayer of the cell membrane would be running back and forth in this direction. The inside of the cells down here, the outside of the cells up here. Now, if you are a muscle cell uh, doing your job, right, your job requires that charges flow back and forth across the membrane, that we build up an electrostatic potential. That is where the energy for muscle contraction comes from. And in order to do that, again, charged ions, things like potassium, sodium, and negatively charged ions like chloride ions move back and forth, but they have to be regulated. And so these 
transmembrane proteins oftentimes can open and close the pore to allow these ions to flow back and forth when needed, but prevent them from flowing back and forth when not. But look what the ivermectin is doing here. If we tilt this protein so that we're looking from the outside of the membrane into the cell, you can see what's going on here is those ivermectin molecules are forcing the pore open. Their presence causes what we call an allosteric effect, a change in the conformation of the protein that forces the pore to stay open all the time. And when that happens, well, if you're a chloride ion on the outside of the cell, like we are right now, you see yourself a nice little super highway right on through to the other side. And of course the charge balance gets messed up, right? When the charge balance gets messed up, the muscle cells can't do their job properly. The organism eventually dies. So that's how ivermectin works. And this is what ivermectin looks like when it's doing its job, working as an antiparasitic agent on these chloride transport, uh, membrane transport proteins. So why doesn't ivermectin affect, say, a cow, right? Or a horse that it has been injected into? Why doesn't it mess up their muscle cells and cause them to stress as well? Well, that's because they're a different type of organism. And these higher order mammalian organisms don't have the same type of transport proteins as these insects and, and smaller organisms that act as parasites often do. And so ivermectin is a useful antiparasitic agent because of this what we call orthogonality. Okay, everybody. Well, thanks for watching my first ever Molecule Monday video. I hope you will subscribe and ring the bell so you'll get notifications when the next Molecule Monday rolls around. Uh, in the meantime, check out my website, chemsurvival.com, for some great resources, tutoring, great courses, projects, wondrium.com, uh, and all those projects that I've got going on right now. And uh, also check out youtube.com slash chemsurvival for my channel with lots of really helpful videos, whether you're studying chemistry in college or are just curious about the world around us. Uh, there's some great videos there for everybody. I hope you'll take a look and I will see everybody next time.